And now, another proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy, and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Quite an eerie title to our play, Lee, Ghost in the House. And quite a play, Ken. Our first act will begin right after a few words from you. As defenders of freedom, America must continue to build up its armed strength. The United States Army is rapidly expanding. More young men and young women are needed. So go to your United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and enlist in the Army today. And now with your star Lee Tracy in the role of Paul Eaton, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of Ghost in the House. <laughs> Again, we must go back, back to the year 1751 and the sweeping hallway of the manor house at Longview, the famous Amadon Plantation. There, by flickering candlelight, we must witness a violent scene. there, let's get back where we belong in the present. Let's look in on a somewhat more peaceful scene, the living room of Henry Shippen's modest home, where we don't have to worry about flickering candlelight or the clash of swords, or do we? Paul, it's a, it's a peach of a place, just what you need for your work. Look, stop being a real estate agent for a minute, will you? I can see what it looks like from these pictures. Well, can a guy be enthusiastic? It's not every day a place like this gets put on the market. If you don't want it, I know plenty of people who do. Mm, boys, don't squabble. Honestly, Cindy, they're like a couple of kids. I know it. Paul, I think it looks right out of this world. It's exactly what we've always wanted. Now, I'm not going to be rushed. All right, don't be rushed, but, but let's take it. I don't know why such a reasonable girl like you got mixed up with a stubborn lug like him anyhow. <laughs> it was my good looks. <laughs> I know it's silly to ask, but if this is such a terrific place, why have the present owners only lived there for three months and... Why are they willing to sell at about half of what they could get? Mrs. Willoughby couldn't get used to living in the country. She's the nervous type. Hank, you might as well tell them the truth. They'd find out anyway. Oh, I'm glad your wife is honest. Well, let's have it. Termites? No. Things that go bump in the night. What do you mean? The place has a ghost. What? Ah, Rod. Well, that's what I say. <laughs> Mrs. Willoughby claims she's been seeing him several times. Well, tell her to lay off the stuff. Well, what kind of a ghost is it? Well, the legend goes that back a couple of hundred years ago, the son of the first owner, when the place was a big plantation, got himself killed in a duel over his lady love. Mrs. Willoughby seems to think he's still wandering around out here looking for her. <laughs> Pretty good. Now, maybe I could do a story on it. Oh, how romantic. Now I know we'll buy it. This ghost just suddenly popped up after 200 years, huh? No, not exactly. The place was empty for nearly 50 years before Willoughby bought it and fixed it over. Well, what about before then? It's always had the reputation of being haunted. Well, not every house that can have a ghost. What do you say we go out tomorrow and have a look and talk it over with the Willoughbys? Oh, they're not there now, Paul. Well, all right. Where are they? You tell them, Penny. It was your idea. Mr. Willoughby took Mrs. Willoughby to Europe for a rest. They left the whole thing in Hank's hands. They said they wanted to get as far away from the place as they could. Oh, look at that view, Paul. Kind of what you dream about, isn't it? Cindy, you'll, you'll both thank me for this. Oh, stop trying to sound like you were giving the place to them. Well, I am, practically. <laughs> My buddy. Now, you just come in here and see how much of a buddy I really am. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Even 
without any furniture in it. Funny how this hallway always seems to have a chill in it. Penny, you cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> a lousy heating system, probably. Now, you wait till I show you. It's the newest and the best. Now, this is the living room in here. How do you like that fireplace? Oh. Original brick, original flagstone. Should make things gay on a cold winter's night. Darling, if you don't buy this place, I'll never speak to you again. Ah, intimidation. That's what I get. <laughs> well, where's the dining room, the kitchen, and so forth? Right this way. Hank, you missed your calling. You ought to be a guide in the museum. Now, where's Miss Willoughby's ghost? Ghosts sleep in the daytime. They only come out at night. <laughs> I love you. You should. Nobody like me. Mm -hmm. One reason I love you is because you're so modest. And the other is that I bought your dream house. Aha, uh -huh, you guessed. I'll tell you a secret. I'm kind of crazy about the joint myself. Oh, Paul, it's... Well, it's just everything all rolled into one. I don't think we can ever thank Penny and Hank enough. That's what Hank will keep telling us for the rest of our lives. For a couple of guys who are pals, you two are certainly awful rough on one another. <laughs> That's just a blind for our manly affection. I've invited him to spend the first weekend with us. Oh, that was very thoughtful of you. Well, it'd be a lot to do. Nine hands are better than four. Nine? Didn't you ever know Hank had three? <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> Listen, kid, can you keep a secret? No, I mean a real secret. No. What woman can? Will you keep this one? Well, I'll try. Sorry. Can't tell you then. Oh, Paul, that's not fair. I promise. Cross my heart, hope to die. Okay. Now, if you breathe a word of this before I tell you to, I'll give the house away to the first person who walks by. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Tell me, tell me. Do you remember Jack Warren? Oh, you mean that actor friend of yours. That's right, and don't say it like that. He's a good guy. He's going to be on hand for our housewarming, too. Oh, well, why don't you invite about 50 more people? I don't get it. Now, calm down. He's not going to be there as a guest. Oh, he's going to be the butler. No, the ghost. The the ghost? Yeah, the ghost. We're going to have some fun with Hank and Penny. <laughs> Jack thinks it's a wonderful idea. He hasn't but a ghost since Hamlet. He's going to haunt us for the weekend. Well, what's the matter? Paul Eaton, I think you should be ashamed of yourself. You, <laughs> you fiend. Ah. <laughs> ah. This is just what the doctor ordered. What are you looking so sour about? I don't know why I sold this place to you. I should have bought it myself. Hard lines, <laughs> Doc. Hard lines. Oh, oh, excuse me. Oh, we've all had a busy day. Why don't we go to bed? Then we can get up early tomorrow and have the whole day to enjoy. Good idea, wife. It's nearly midnight anyway. Well, and if we're not in the sack by 12, we'll all turn into pumpkins. Maybe we should stay up and greet the ghost. You stay up. If he wants to see me, he'll have to come and wake me up. <laughs> Ghost, what a lot of nonsense. Hank? Hmm? Hank, I, I heard something. I really did. Mm. I heard it again. Hank, wake up. Oh, ask me in the morning. Hank, Hank, please wake up. Hey, cut it out. What's the matter with you? I heard something. Oh, that's fine. My, what big ears you've got. So you... There. There, you see? All right. So something went bump in the night. Listen to that wind. It's probably a door or a window or, or a... Or a ghost. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Now stop pestering me and let's go to... Why don't you go wake Paul? Wake up Paul? Well, that's the last thing I'm going to do. We'd never hear the end of it. Well, I'm certainly not going to lie here all night and be kept awake by that, that noise, whatever it is. It's all right. Get up and go downstairs and fix it. My gallant husband, you're afraid to go down there. Afraid? Afraid? Why, of all the... Did that sound any closer? No, it did not. And stopped acting like a child. You let your imagination run away with you. There isn't one blessed thing that happens in this world for which there isn't a logical explanation. Stop preaching. If you're half a man, you'll go down there and stop whatever's making that noise, whether it's logical or not. All right, come on, get out of there. You're the one who's bothered by this thing. 
I'm going to prove to you once and for all that occasionally I know what I'm talking about. And when you do, I'll believe you. Now, you get out of that better, I'll drag you out. And whatever you do, be quiet. If Paul and Cindy found out about this thing... Uh, that was closer. Come on. Hold on to the banister. Why don't you turn on a light? Might wake up our host. Not easy, does it? This, this hall is freezing. It does have a bit of a chill. <laughs> Quiet. Now look there. There's your ghost, just like every other ghost. This door to the cellar is banging. Well, what would make it bang? There's no wind. Now keep your voice down. There's an explanation to that too, my love. There's a draft blowing up from the cellar that blows it this way. And if you put your hand down here, you feel a strong draft blowing this way. Between the two, your ghost. Satisfied? No. Well, that's too bad. I'm going back to bed. Come along, I said. Frank. Now, what's the matter with you? Look. Look in there. Uh. How do you explain that? Uh. Uh. It's real, and yet it's not real. I, I think we'd better go wake up Paul and Cindy. Shh. You, you wanted to hear us? <laughs> no. Now we know what the thumping was. <laughs> he was just banging his sword on the floor. <laughs> Everything has a logical explanation. <laughs> What, 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 what's the matter? Paul, Mrs. Willoughby was right. I've got to tell you the truth. There's a ghost in your living room. He's fainted. Oh, what a night. And you can laugh all you want. Finish your coffee, Hank. We saw it with our own eyes. <laughs> what did he look like? As a matter of fact, he was very handsome. Tall, with a long red coat and, and silver buckles on his shoes. He held a long sword in one hand. The thumping we heard was the sword hitting the floor. Kind of mad at the world, huh? You could see right through him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have another cup of coffee, Hank. It's good for the nerves. Stay put, I'll get it. Well, did he say anything to you? No. No, he, he didn't see us, I don't think. He acted like he was looking for something. Well, maybe he was hungry. You just wait. You won't think it's so funny when you see him. I could see right through him. Oh, darling, you'll be all right. What's the matter with you? You look like you'd seen a ghost. Huh? I didn't, but I guess they did. That was Jack Warren on the phone. He got a rush job. He, he couldn't make it. <laughs> Lee Tracy, starring in the role of Paul Eaton in the proudly we hail production of Ghost in the House, will return for the second act in just a moment. If you're a high school graduate, or soon will be, and thinking about your future, consider the many opportunities offered by an enlistment in the United States Army. Visit the United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station in your neighborhood. Have a talk with a recruiting sergeant and learn of the numerous advantages to be gained by joining the Army after you finish school. As graduates, young men have the chance to qualify for officer candidate school and thus win commissions. So volunteer for the Army. You can help your country and yourself. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star Lee Tracy in the role of Paul Eaton, your Army and your Air Force present the second act of Ghost in the House. We've got to figure this thing out. Logically. There's a logical explanation for everything. Isn't that what you said, dear? Has to be. Only, in, unless you're both balmy, there isn't. Well, I suppose we can live here with a ghost as long as he doesn't bother us. We cannot. Not normal. It's unhealthy. 
Makes nervous wrecks of all of us. You and your funny jokes. I'm glad this one bounced on you. All right, so it bounced. And so Mrs. Willoughby wasn't kidding. Maybe you are, though. Paul Eaton, I swear we're not kidding. Look at my poor husband. Did you ever see him put on an act like that? He, he's like a zombie. Had his hair tied in a, in a queue with a ribbon. Had white lace at his throat and on his cuffs. I could see right through him. Oh, Hank, be still. Only one thing to do. What's that? Have a talk with this character. Who ever heard of talking to a ghost? Well, I, I, I never heard of anybody who tried. He, he might stab you with that big sword he carries. Well, I'm going to give it a try. You can go to bed and I'll stay down here and wait for him. Alone? I think that would be best. We've we got to have this thing out, you know, man to man. Brave, aren't you? Like a lion. Well, I think you're crazy. Well, have you got any better suggestions? What is it they do to ghosts? Uh, exercise them? <laughs> exorcise. It's a little different. Oh. They get enough exercise tramping around anyway. Well, how do you exorcise a ghost? I don't know. Uh, I think that you just t tell it to go away. That's, that's just what I'm going to tell this creature. Suppose he won't pay any attention to you. Well, I won't know till I try. You, you good people go to bed. I'll just sit right here and wait. I think that's, that's a logical thing to do. Mm -hmm. Penny, you'd better get him under wraps before he starts haunting houses. Paul, I'm scared. I don't think you should stay down here alone. Let me do the shivering, and don't worry. I'll holler if he gets rough. I'm pretty mean with a poker. I could see right through him. Logically, that is. Holy suffering c c catfish. Hey, hey, you, you, you. Yeah, yeah, you. Molly. Molly. My own heart's darling, is that you? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not Molly. Then you're Roger. Draw your sword, you foul knave. Hey, put that thing down. I'll slit your gizzard, you wretched devil. Cut it out, will you? I'm not Roger anybody. Just put on that thing before you hurt somebody. Oh, I say I'm sorry. Archfish, I took you for Roger de Lacey. If I ever catch that rum fed onion, I'll have my blade sheathed in his guts up to the very hill. Ah, c cool off, will you? I don't suppose you've seen my molly. My sweet, darling Molly, I, I've been searching for her for so long now. She's not here, honest. You, why don't you just go look someplace else? You, we're, uh, we're kind of crowded here. Ah, uh, stiff, I'm dry. Where's the punch bowl? Haven't had any bombo since the Harrington's route. Bombo? What's that? Odds bluff. Gazooks. Sounds and all that sort of twaddle. You don't know what Bombo is in all truth? Why, you haven't lived, man. You must be dead. Now, uh, uh, look, let's not get mixed up. You... Look, I don't have any of this Bombo, but I, I, I've got some scotch. The devil with your ancestry, sir. I'm quartered myself. What about something from the first? How can you drink anything? Has the king made a law against it? N no, but, but you're the... Go softly, sir. Do not presume upon my patience. Else I may be forced to unhinge thy head. It may be of some import to know that I am the son of the greatest swordsman in all Westmoreland. I got. Yeah, sure. Uh huh. Now look, just uh, try a little of this. What huh? is it, Claret? Peach brandy? No, it's Johnny Walker. You mean you put the poor fellow in a bottle and made a drink out of him? <sighs> no, it's Scotch whiskey. The best. Hurry up and take a slug. I need one more than you do. Ah, oh, nectar. Pure nectar. Mm-hmm. Here, give me a... Sit up. Do not touch me. I know not who you are, but I like not your manners or your face. I bid you good evening. I must find my Molly, my own heart's darling. Hey, come back here. You have a... Right through the wall. Right through the wall. Johnny Walker and all. Oh, oh, 
Who's that? Just one of us ghosts. Oh. What happened? Well, we had a long, incoherent talk. Then he got sore and walked off through the wall, looking for his Molly. You mean you really talked to him? We weren't formally introduced or anything like that, but we had words. Really not so frightening once you get used to him. I don't want to get used to him. I want to get rid of him. Do you think you'll come back tonight? Uh, sure. There's your answer. He's back. And he's better than ever before. Why don't we both go down? Yeah, we'll, we'll get Penny and Hank and have a party. <laughs> that is, if he hasn't finished off my Johnny Walker. Well, forget Penny and Hank. Let them shiver in their beds. I want to convince this ghost. He probably hasn't seen a woman in a couple of hundred years. Mm. Probably hasn't. That ought to be cozy. Aren't you scared? I'm petrified. But then I'm a female, and that makes me curious. <laughs> Lead on, Lady McHamlet. Take a good look and don't faint. Colin, he's for real. You ready to go meet him? Oh, oh, hold on to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, hey, Mac. Did you address me, sir? I'll have oh. you. Molly! Huh? Molly! My own heart's darling. Hey. Keep away from her. That's my wife. Oh, Molly, my own sweet Molly, don't run from me. Hey. Out of my way, Molly, and I cleave thee in twain. Ah, cut it out. She isn't Molly. She's Cindy. A side road to see me not. Molly, come to me. Oh, re re really, I I'm not Molly. I I'm Cindy Eaton. I'm sorry I'm not your Molly, but, but honestly, I'm not. But, but, art's death. I beg thy pardon, mistress. In this light, I mistook you for another... Perhaps you could tell me where I might find I've searched for her so long. Oh, you you poor go uh, man. There's no Molly here now. Wouldn't it be better to try looking for her somewhere else? Somewhere else? Sounds, madam, I never thought of that. A capital idea. You might try the village graveyard. Sit down. Were I not in such a hurry, I might tarry long enough to slit thy reason. If thou hast a reason, good madam, would thou show me the way out? Oh. Yes, I'd love to. Perhaps I shall find Mamali at the Harringtons. Should you see Roger de Lacey, sir, tell him that Derek Amidon awaits his pleasure and will greatly enjoy skewering him on the point of his faithful sword. You might also mention to the foul wretch that I am a son of the greatest swordsman in all Westmoreland. Madam, I bid you good night. It was indeed a pleasant evening. I particularly enjoyed the bombo. And you, Siddha, go to the devil. I like neither your looks nor your manners. Nasty temper. Look, close that door. What? Hey, what, what's the matter with you? Oh, he was, he was such a romantic ghost and so lonely for his Molly. Oh, the poor thing. It's been a lovely weekend. Uh, unusual is the word, I guess. Well, I guess we won't be bothered anymore. Well, don't sound so sad. Somewhere there's a logical explanation. Oh, shut up, Hank. For once, he's right. What do you mean? I kind of hate to tell you this, but we've all been taken. Taken? Huh? Yeah, taken. <laughs> I guess you call it the double wing ding off the back backboard. Huh? I found this over on the cabinet there. What is it? identification bracelet with the initials J.C.W. Our ghost was John C. Warren. Jack? That was not Jack. He didn't look like Jack at all. Don't fight it, honey. It was Jack, all right. He's a mighty good actor. So your little game really backfired. I knew there was a... A logical explanation. I'll call him up and congratulate him for an excellent performance. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, don't sound so tragic about it. I should think it would be a big relief. Yeah. You awake? Huh? Why would Jack insist he was only here Friday night and not Saturday? Oh, he's a comedian. Don't let it bother you. Well, uh... Hey, hey, did you hear that? Yeah. Prob 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 probably a door banging. It's, it's, you know, it's a little windy tonight. How much do you want to bet? Well, we're not going to find out. I can't take much more of this. Oh, we don't have to find out. I know he's down there. <laughs> Holy cats! He must have brought her back with him. Oh, isn't it romantic? He probably found her at the Harringtons. Suppose he starts bringing the rest of his friends around. Oh, he won't. All he wanted to find was his Molly. Well, okay. But if they want to haunt this house, he'd better stay away from my scotch. <laughs> Our star, Lee Tracy, will return in a moment with a word about next week's show. Here's a word about the American soldier. You know, except for him, freedom, liberty, and justice would be endangered. Except for him, our hopes for a better, peaceful future would be more difficult to realize. He's a part of the backbone of our country. The United States Army is constantly seeking young men and young women of courage and initiative. And there's a special job for you. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station for full information. Enlist in the Army. Remember, your country needs you now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly we hail stars Lee Tracy. Ghost in the House was written by DeWitt Cop. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. Join us again next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail, won't you? Our play is titled Ride by Night, and it's a story of the French Revolution. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>